Hello everyone, today I'll show you how you can add a smooth transition between characters in your game. You can use this technique in cases like when you use a mount or you enter a vehicle or you control any other character type like for example now I can go on this bike. You can see the camera smoothly transitions from the third person character to the bike character. and when you use this technique, you will not simply teleport the camera from one character to the other. You can see that it transitions smoothly. You have an animation getting on the bike. For example, this can be a horse or entering a vehicle or anything like that. Let's start with creating this example that I just showed you. Let's open the player controller and the third person character. So let me delete everything that I have created. Let's start creating from the ground up. Let's start from the player controller. Let's create a custom event. So right click in the event graph and start typing custom event. Let's name this event get on bike, for example. And this event will need two inputs, the current player that we want to change and the next player type pawn that we want to change to. So let's create first one input. Let's call this uh, current player. The type should be pawn, object reference. And then let's create another variable, which will be next player. Again, type pawn, object reference. And then let's create two variables to save this uh, current and next player. So we can use it in our graph. Click on the variable at button. Let's call this first variable player reference. The type will be pawn object reference. And let's create another one bike reference. And the type will be our bike character. This is my uh, custom player type for you. For example, if you're changing to a vehicle or something else, this should be the type of the character that you're creating. When you first get into this custom event, you want to save these variables. So out drag the player reference here in the scene, in the event editor connect it and save the current player to the player reference. Then for the bike reference, first we'll need to cast it. So drag out of the next player pin and cast to bike character. This is again the type of my character. This should be set to the type of the character you're using. So let's connect this here and out drag the bike reference, connect it here as a bike character pin to the bike reference. So now I have saved the two input variables for my custom event into these variables for this player controller. So now the simplest thing to change from one of these uh, pawns to the other is to possess the next player, which is our bike reference. So drag out of here and set possess. Let's connect this bike reference as the pawn that we want to possess. Let's see what this is doing. And I'll show you what else you need to add here after this, just for you to understand better. So let's go into our third person character. For me, it's this 
mountain bike rider character. So let's create a action event. So in your project for the input section where you have action mappings. So for me, this trick action mapping is the E key. So when I hit the E key, this is the input action trick, the E key action. So when I press this E key, I want to activate this uh, custom event. So what I want to do is when my player is next to the bike, this bike here, this bike character, let's go into the viewport. Let's delete this for now. So this is my bike character. So I want to have a box with an area where my E key will work as a get on the bike button. So let's add here into the viewport for my bike character, a box component, box collision. And let's scale this into the area that I want to trigger my action. So this seems fine. So when I'm next to the bike on either side, let's make it a little bit smaller into this direction. Okay. This box, make sure that this box is with the collision preset overwap all dynamic. So your player will be of a type dynamic object and this will generate an overwap event for it. So let's save this bike character now. Let's go into our mountain bike rider pawn. This could be your third person or any character pawn. So for your input action, when you press the key, Let's right click here and get overlapping actors. So this get overlapping actors will give you an array with all the overlapping actors. Let's do a for each loop because you can have a lot of overlapping actors. Let's go through all of them and then let's cast to a bike character. Let's connect this array element here into the object. So we are casting the overlapping actor to the bike character. And if this is uh, successful, so let's drag out of here. Let's do a do once for our first bike character if we have a lot next to our player pawn. Let's do only for the first one. Let's cast to player controllers, which is the type of my player custom player controller. Let's get the player controller and connect it here. So we are casting the player controller to the custom player controller in which we have this get on bike function. After we cast this player control, so if the cast is successful, we activate this get on bike function. So we need to have the player controller connected here. We need to have the current player and the next player. The next player will be this bike character here. This will be our next player. Let's reroute to make it more visible. And for our current player, let's get a self reference because we are currently inside the third person character, which is this mountain bike rider. We get a reference to itself and we are connecting it to the current player. So we are connecting the controller into the target, the 
third person character into the current player and the bike character into the next player variable. After we activate this custom function, we are possessing the bike character pawn. So let's try this now. Let's hit the play button. Let's go next to the bike and hit the E key. So now I'm properly possessing the bike, but the problem is that my other pawn is left next to it. So what we need to do after we possess the bike into our player controller is to destroy actor and the actor that we want to destroy is the player reference. So do this only after you have already possessed the bike character. So let's compile this and save. Let's hit the play button. Now, when we go next to the bike, we are properly possessing the bike. We are now controlling the bike and everything is fine. So to do this, more professionally and for your game to look better. You don't want immediately to change from one player type to the other. You want the camera to smoothly transition between them and you want to add an animation between them. For me, it will be the animation of getting on the bike. So let's continue with adding these features. First, when we are still into our original player, we want to hide our original player pawn because we will only destroy it after we possess the bike. So first we want to hide it. We want to make our rider on the bike visible and we want to transition the camera between both of them. After we save this bike reference here, Let's disconnect for now. Let's do a set actor hidden in game. So let's set this to hidden. So we want to set the player reference to hidden. We want to now set visibility. Okay, let's drag out of the bike reference. Inside this bike reference I have the third person character as called Mesh. So here into my bike reference this Mesh is my third person character. It's currently set to visible false. So this is my rider for the bike player. It's set to not be visible by default. So when I try to mount the bike, I'll set this mesh to visibility of true. Then I'll disable the input because I'll have an animation playing with the rider getting on the bike. I don't want to move the pawn between the start of the animation and the end, so I'll disable the input, hiding the third person character, then showing the bike rider on the bike character type, and then disabling the input. Then let's use the set view target with blend. This will smoothly transition your camera. Let's control drag the bike reference and connect it to the new target. So from the original player to the bike reference, you will transition the camera, let's say for two seconds. So blend time, enter two. And for now, let's connect everything like this. I'll add the animation later, so let's first see what this part of the event graph is doing. Let's hit the play button. 
Now let's go next to the bike and when I hit the E key I'm immediately transitioned behind the bike so there's some problem with our graph. So when we set the visibility, disable the input and then use this set view target. After this we are immediately possessing the bike character so this is no longer active because it's happening on our previous player reference. So between these two nodes I need to add a delay node and let's do a two second delay because this is the length of my animation. So after two seconds delay only after this animation with the camera is ended I will possess the bike and I will destroy the original actor. So compile and save this. Let's hit the play button. Now let's go to the bike, hit the E key, the camera slowly transitions and I'm now controlling the bike. Perfect. So what we need to do to finish this and make it like the example I showed you in the beginning is to play an animation montage. So play montage and this animation montage will play for my bike reference mesh. So this is my bike rider. Let's connect it to skeletal mesh component and the animation will be animation montage rider get on bike and another montage which will be again from my bike reference then it will be my bike basic this is my skeletal mesh for the bike and the montage will be animation montage bike get on bike now I have added these two animations one is for the bike and the other is for the rider let's hit the play button now when I go next to the bike when I hit the E key I now have the animation of the rider getting on the bike and now I'm controlling the bike. So everything works fine now. You can see that our game looks a lot more professional like this. It's not immediately changing the characters but we have an animation for the camera and animation for the actual player getting on the bike. This can be a player getting into your vehicle and then you start driving the vehicle. Everything similar to this. You can use any two character types and change between them in this style. So if you like this, please like the video. You can join the channel to support me and please subscribe to the channel as well. If you have any questions or ideas for next tutorials please write in the comments and see you in the next one. Bye guys!